everybody. Thank you for tuning in to Empower Hour with your host, Nikorn Sri. This platform is to educate, empower, and enlighten the audience so that they can reach their full potential. I created this platform because I wanted to be the bridge of the viewers and the people that I've I've talked to on a day-to-day -day basis about their struggles of, you know, entrepreneurship and leadership and things like that. And to me, I feel like if I were to be able to share that with the world, we would be able to say, hey, we can do that ourselves. We can be the leaders of the world and we can be entrepreneurs of the world. And I am so grateful to be able to have our guest here to share his wisdom, to share his knowledge about business and leadership. I'm so, so grateful that Kevin is here with me. And, um, you know, he is such a wise person, guys, not only through business, but in through life, period. You know, the very first time I met him was about a year or two ago, right? Yeah. And um, I knew that he was operating through hope and fearlessness and power because of his tone, his, his vision, because of his um, experiences. And I'm so, so grateful that I have invited him here to the studio to, ver to share his wisdom with us. So can you tell us what you do and how you got started? Sure, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. And, of course. Um, you know, since we've known each other for a year, you know, I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, um, I currently um, operate a private equity firm where we have um, uh, three subsidiary companies now under it. And um, there's two detailing companies. One is uh, based here in uh, Virginia, Maryland, D.C. area. Mm -hmm. And the other is based in uh, Florida. Wow. And then... Uh, getting ready to launch a new company called Credit Freedom. It's a um, where we repair and restore credit to help people with bad credit and just want, you know, want to get financing for a, a home, a car, or any type of loan. You know, we help them restore their credit, build their credit so they can get that loan. So that launches next week, and the website is uh, creditfreedom4u.com. Yeah. And, um, and that's uh, currently what I do. But how I got started um, was, <laughs> it's uh, actually funny because it was at the age of 20 when I um, dropped out of high, uh, college. Wow. And um, I opened up my first company, Presidential Detailing. It was another detailing company where we, um, where we got contracts with dealers to become their wash and detail department. It was, it's similar to the two subsidiary companies that I currently have right now. It's uh, economical for dealers. And I got that started, ran it for eight years. And um, unfortunately, the company went under due to bankruptcy. And, the revenue uh, was really high. Yeah, we grew it to a uh, $4.5 million a year business. $4.5 million. With about 200 to 250 employees. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> At one time, yeah. And um, so when it went under, I, um, I quickly had to revamp and rebuild at a very young age and quickly because of the role that I had in my personal life with my family and just in general. So it, mm -hmm. um, and now that's where I have my private equity firm called Rahal Rich Capital. Yeah. Now. So that's where I It seems now. like um, everything that you're doing is under the same umbrella of wanting to help people become better. What is it that it is about you that want it? Because you said credit, you said private equity firm, you said, you know, you know, leadership, entrepreneurship, what is it that drives you? What drives me the most is influencing my employees. I, I don't consider myself as a boss because when I was younger, I, I was this flamboyant entrepreneur that I wanted to make money. I wanted to have the nice cars. I wanted to have the nice jewelry and, yeah. you know, the nice life. Right. And I went, at, I had my foot on the gas and I went 150 miles an hour and wow. without looking in any direction. Yeah. And I didn't stop to start thinking, what, why am I doing what I'm doing? Because everybody has a purpose of what they do. Yeah. I didn't sit down and talk to myself to say, why? Why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I even a business owner? Why, okay. why am I even w waking up every morning at 5 a.m.? going to make money is it is it only because of this that i want you know is it because of the cars because of the jewelry and that wasn't it mm -hmm. and now i realize what is the why 
The why is more to influence your employees so they can have a better life, so they can move up. Wow. And they can help you to grow. And I looked at it as that if I have the knowledge, before I used to look at it as if I have the knowledge, mm -hmm. I can hold on to the knowledge and I can grow myself. I don't need anybody else. Right. That's the mistake I made. Mm -hmm. And that's how my company went under. Because right. I didn't build within uh, other great leaders. Right. Because every great leader out there, and I started reading a lot more books about great leaders and how they've gone to where they've gone, is because they've influenced their employees to become leaders for them to grow. Right. And their employees will want to do good for them. Right. So, and I didn't look at it that way. And now with Rahulwich Capital and what I'm trying to do is diversify myself into different fields of businesses that I know that I can manage and that I know that I have the knowledge in. Mm -hmm. And I know I can build great leaders to help me grow. But you have to have that self-reflection and that self-actualization and, and that different perspective to be able to gain that knowledge. Because, first of all, I am reading a book called Conscious Capitalism. And it's about, um, well, it's the, the co-owner or the co-owner of Whole Foods. Okay. John McKay is the one who wrote the book. And he talks about conscious capitalism. And he talks about the overall effect of how it affects the employee's lifestyle. It, it affects the environment. It affects the overall picture. And But he cannot get there until he really you know, knows himself. And he says that it's, it's, it's a vision and a purpose and a mission-based business. Yeah. And then that's how you um, employ the employees to be able to latch on to um, to your purpose and then they stay longer yeah and so um, because you're you only want to employ the people that are alignment of what you believe right sure so um, so first of all I want to say how did you even have that courage to drop out of college and say I'm gonna do this on my own first of all what was your motivation and you know how did you gain that courage at 20 years old? Well, at, at the age of 20, you really have nothing to lose, but just you know your, um, you know your reputation, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I, I had a lot of responsibilities mm -hmm. at a very young age. I took care of my mother, and um, I um, I put myself in a position where I surrounded myself with people that were older than me and more successful than I am. I never had a youthful life. Right. I never went to much parties and I never went to f college, you know, to have a, for frat brothers or, you know, a, a college parties, you know, th that most people did. Mm -hmm. I was more focused on just going out there and creating a business and making money. Right. But what gave me the courage to answer your question was more of to make something of my last name. Uh, my father passed away when I was a year old. Wow. And um, to me, it was important to be able to carry on that last name okay. and to make something of it. Because the way I saw it is I was sitting in my economics class, and I, I remember thinking to myself, as a you are what you are in this world. You know, you're either somebody or you're nobody. You know, mm. you just you leave, or leave a mark or you're not going to leave a mark. And the way I looked at it was a sense of urgency. If you have a sense of urgency, and to me it was not just I have to do it, I have to, I have to. It was a must. I must do it. Like I must go. I yeah. must just get up and go. Because you can't, if you think too much, you're not going to make it happen. To me it was more of a must and just go with it. And whatever ha the outcome is, it happens. Because i rather live with oh well instead of what if. Mm -hmm. That's the way I saw it. Because if I took the, the leap of faith, to make to go forward with this and if it didn't work out I can say oh well mm -hmm. at least I did what I felt in my heart mm -hmm. and th that's what gave me the courage is, is that's exactly what it is it's instead of saying what if it was oh well mm -hmm. and I looked at it as and it was right around the time where the recession was almost coming in and, and um, you know a lot of my good friends that were very wise in the financial industry gave me a little heads up as well with what was coming yeah and they, they didn't see it directly of how the magnitude that it had hit but I knew that I needed to get something going before that because I knew I would have been in a more of a struggle as a college graduate 
um, later on than if I would have taken that risk at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's mainly reasons. There was many reasons, but more of, oh, well, instead of what if. So you didn't think like, <laughs> I'll finish college and then start my business or while I'm in college to start my business? You know, I could have, I, I, I thought about that now. I think about that now. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why I'm looking to go back to school yeah. and get my degree. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually uh, have an enrollment uh, yeah. coming up um, in the summertime. Yes. And it's in Miami, Florida. Yeah. So I, um, I, I thought about it. I said, well, maybe I can go to school and at the same time do my business. But I knew that if I put half focus here, half focus here, one or the other would not get the proper attention. Yeah. And it wouldn't go. So I put, again, I went full throttle yeah. on the gas with my company. And I said, let me just leave this aside. Yeah. And then I can come back to this. Yeah. But... I paid some consequences along the way because if I were to have my degree right now, I at least with my private equity firm wanting to go to you know finance school and get my finance degree, I could have been doing lending right now to other businesses like how I want to and yeah. being able to write our own contracts and lending processes with the FDIC knowing what to do. But now it's backtracked because of not going to school. So school is important mm -hmm. and also not important in some ways if you want if you have a vision yeah and i had the vision mm -hmm. but then there was a piece missing as well yeah so now i when looking go to go back to school yeah. in order to bring it on so i can add value more to my private equity firm so it's funny <laughs> that you say that because um many many years ago um i seen that you know beyonce superstar you know yeah. she went back to school to get her um her education and she's like the most paid you know pop or yeah. pop artist or whatever um and she see value in education and for you you found your god-given ability and you've excel in that but you still see value in <clears throat> education a lot of times entrepreneurs are like you don't really need education to succeed and i don't think that you are supposed to go to school to succeed you go to school to be able to gain that knowledge and the proper you know preparation to be able able to you know reach your full potential mm -hmm. uh, what is the value for schooling for you when you've already reached your success in your business the value of education is not just to be successful the value of education is lies to what you teach to the next person of mm -hmm. how to be a great human being mm -hmm. education comes in different ways mm -hmm. you know i learned that um education can help someone with just life in general you know mm -hmm. you don't have to necessarily school is an education yes but what you learn in school can help you to teach the next person mm -hmm. you know what you read in books mm -hmm. and your knowledge with what you know yourself uh, can help the next person as well but it's good to have both mm -hmm. the way i look at it is education can um take you to many places if god forbid one day you lose uh, you know your businesses to mm -hmm. due to certain circumstances mm -hmm. and you just don't have that drive anymore and you want to just go work for a corporation right and you don't want to be your plan b exactly yeah. so it's always good to have a plan b and that's where education falls is like as your plan b me i'm more doing it to s make myself better yeah i i always look at education in many ways of reading books i read about eight books a year but last year i slacked mm -hmm. i only read two mm -hmm. <laughs> and those books that i bought are just sitting there right now yeah so i i need to get back on track with that this year yeah and um so i look at education just helping in general to educate yourself to greater heights um, with knowing some few things that you don't know by be just going on the, going on your own, becoming an entrepreneur, and just going towards your vision. Um, but that's what education can do in my perspective. Wait, you said at 20 you uh, you reached a uh, revenue of how much? At 27, it became about 4 to $4.5 million. $4.5 million revenue. That is amazing. <laughs> um, but then you said that it went to bankruptcy, right? Yes. So how did that feel when you went in the peak of your um, your success and then to be able to say, hey, wow, I, you know, I, I've experienced bankruptcy. What did that, what, how did that affect you? And it, it put a real toll on me. Um, 
what had happened was the company was in a position where it was being um, sued um, by um, employees uh, due to wages. And I have no shame of saying this, you know. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's more of, um, again, learning curve moving forward and becoming better mm -hmm. because if if anybody comes and sits here and tells you that they haven't failed they're lying mm -hmm. you know failure is the key to your success right and i believe that you have to fail in order to be able to succeed mm -hmm. because whether if you fall hard or you fall uh gently it's a fall and mm -hmm. you learn from it you fall eight times you get up nine right that's my philosophy I revamped right away, but when we were in a pro when we were in the stage of being sued, I got sued by eight employees wow. um, uh, in on the April of 2015, and we settled August of 2015, and then I got hit again with another eight employees um, in October of 2015, and I, that one ha was extended. We lost clients. I was on the Washington Post. Wow. Metro section, um, wow. and um, and some of my clients saw that, and it was a big toll on myself, and just everything came down on me, you know, because as I was talking in the beginning, just being that flamboyant lifestyle, and then you get hit with this, going from here to down here, y you know, it's a big shift, and you have to know how to put yourself in a state of mind where you're positive you're still thinking positive you're still waking up every morning i remember nights i was at the office from 6 a.m till 1 a.m mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways to save my company wow and and um i would even sleep at the office because i didn't want to leave i wanted to wake up the next morning be right at my desk again as my office manager walked in what strategies do we have what ideas do we have but time was running out time wasn't on my side and um I looked at it as more of, again, a lesson learned into where I am now. Because I made mistakes as a CEO of presidential detailing, and mm -hmm. I take full responsibility of what happened. Um, there's no one to blame but myself. I should have recognized some of the things that were happening and, um, and, and made a decision from there, but I did not. I, 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 I ignored the warning signs. So, like, I've talked to people who started their business, who became successful and said, I'd rather just work for someone at a high-level position because I don't have to have that weight and that responsibility. Sure. So you didn't have that thought to say, hey, I'm going to go back to, you know, working for someone or... No, I, I never... That was never in my thought mm -hmm. because I knew what I'm capable of doing. And um, I knew that I had... A calling yeah and I would you know it's, it's funny because I would I would wake up every morning I, I meditate yeah I meditate I pray and I take a breather I do this routine that I have I jump up and down and then I take breaths and then I um I start thinking about I hold my heart and then I start thinking about some thought like happy thoughts when I was a kid hmm. because that's when your mind is at the clearest yeah because as a child you don't have worries. Mm -hmm. You don't have any worries. All you're worried about is what I'm going to play with next. Yeah. Or how am I going to play around. Yeah. So I go into that thought to put myself in a, in a state where it is clear, I'm clear-minded. Mm -hmm. So anytime I'm thinking about, hey, maybe, this is, maybe I should call it quits, I do that and I remind myself of who I am. Yeah. Because I would have a bigger calling. Yeah. And I would ask God when I had presidential detailing, I actually would ask him, is there more for me out there? Yeah. And I would question that at the highest peak of the company. Whenever I was making uh, you know, a certain figure every month that was more than well off for me, and um, I would ask him that question, and I guess this was my calling to be in the position that I'm in right now. And I had to go through the magnitude of failure that I went through to be where I am right now. Yeah. Because... If I hadn't went, if I hadn't gone through that, I probably would have never moved on. I probably would have just been that blue collared business owner of Virginia, Maryland, D.C., owning presidential. Day. That's not what I wanted. Yeah. I want nationwide. Yeah. Me, it was more big picture for yeah. me. I always wanted a private equity firm where I had subsidiary companies and ran multiple companies. Right. 
so I, I look at back now and I say, thank you, God, you know, like, thank you, even though I had so much, but that wasn't going to get me to where I really wanted to be. And it's unfortunate the way I had to go through it because I was in some ways ashamed of what I went through and I hurt some people along the way mm -hmm. with not being truthful about what happened yeah. to my company. And when you see that hurt to, towards the people you love, it, you know, it, it reminds you of who you really are. Yeah. You know, it puts you in a position where you're, you tell yourself that I have to be more humbled about this because if I don't, I'm going to hurt more people around me mm -hmm. and move towards your destiny more, you know, and share your story more. And this is why I'm here today. Yeah. I agreed to come on. It's because mm -hmm. I believe everybody needs to know, you know, the story and, and what I've gone through. Yeah because it, it could help the next person that is going through a similar situation. Yeah. You might think that this is a bad timing for you, yeah. but there's a bigger calling. Right. So that's what I believe. There are people that I've talked to um, that said, I am nervous. <clears throat> I said, why? They said, because I feel it inside of me to make that jump. I want to, you know, I want to be able to go on my own and, you know, become an entrepreneur and things like that. But I'm so used to this comfortable check that is going to pay my bills. Um, but I know that I deserve more. You know, how, what would you say to those people that want to jump and they're in the verge of jumping? Like, what is the mindset? What is, what do you think? I mean, like, what would you tell them? I would tell them, go with your gut. You know, whatever it is you feel, take that chance. Don't think. The more you think, the more you're going to set yourself back. Whether if it's in your personal life, your, your, your business life, or your relationship life. Too much thinking could put you in a position where it's even worse than where you are right now. But whatever it is that you feel in your gut, go with that. Mm-hmm. Because that is the truthful thinking right there. Mm -hmm. It's what you're feeling in your gut. And I went to, I, that's what I did. I, I did, you know, you, you, there, you can't help the human mind of thinking certain things. And I'm a victim of that, you know, whether it comes to my personal business or even relationship life, you, you can overthink something. But at the same time, if you work towards it and you're, you know, like again, I said, you fail eight times, you get up nine times. There were strategies that you were doing that weren't working, mm -hmm. but you keep going. Mm -hmm. And the person that wants to take that leap needs to just do it. Don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that you're feeling, you're like, okay, if I take this chance, yeah, I got all this bills. I got, But where will you be 10 years from now when you got more bills and you're in the same position as where you are? Mm -hmm. You could have said to yourself, I took that chance and... Now I'm in a higher position, again, living with all oh, well instead of what if. Mm -hmm. I believe in that because mm -hmm. people always say what if, what if, what if, what if this, what if that, what if that. Don't live with that. Mm -hmm. Just go with the mentality of all oh, well. You can always, as, because if you look at it this way, when you're working for someone, you can always go back and work for someone. Mm -hmm. They'll always take you back. Mm -hmm. But there will never be an opportunity for you out there as an entrepreneur or a business owner when that other person is outworking you. Mm -hmm. If you outwork your com competition or that other person that's trying to be an entrepreneur or business owner, you will get there. But if you don't do anything about it, they'll get there before you. That's the way I see it. I go in every morning thinking to myself that there is somebody else out there trying to take everything I have mm -hmm. that is outworking me. So it's like war every day. It's war with myself. I'm okay. in competition with myself. Okay. People ask me sometimes, who, who, who's your role model? Like, who are you chasing? Like, who, who are you chasing to be like? Mm -hmm. I say myself in 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I'll look at myself in 10 years. Did I get to where I am? No. Right. But I got to keep going. I'm not where I am yet. So it's always chasing yourself. If you look at it as where you vision your, envision yourself, where you want to be in five to 10 years or even two years, mm -hmm. then you will get that you're chasing yourself. There's nobody else out there but yourself, the person in the mirror that you need to go after. So did you always knew that you wanted to do, um, you know, detailing and things like that um, and private equity? Because sometimes people are struggling on because they want to be entrepreneurs. They want to work for themselves. They have the courage to do that. But they're always deciding what is, you know, how do I know my God given ability? How do I know what industry do I need to do? Like, how did you find out what industry that you need to do? I always had a passion for cars. Um, when I was growing up, I, I, I loved Formula One racing. I loved 
um, I loved to know who are the owners of the Formula One racing teams, you know? I always know, and I loved NBA basketball, and I always was fascinated by who owned the team. Mm. And it was weird, because I'm like a 11-year-old kid, I'm trying to know who is behind that team that that's running that team like that owns yeah. that team mm-hmm. and it was just like unbelievable and then that you know my sister when i said why do you care you know who owns the team because i'm like that's what i want to be i don't want to be the player i want to be the owner right so i can at 11 at 11 wow so <laughs> and um so i i my call i i looked at it as whenever i was growing up it was more of I knew that I wanted to have multiple businesses. I loved Monopoly. I loved the fact that you have like an empire that you're running and you you have things that you like. Like my passion is automotive. I have businesses in automotive. What else do I have a passion for? I have a passion for, you know, owning an NBA basketball team. Mm. That's going to be there. What else is there? Dealerships. I'm going to have dealerships. Right. You know, you you start, and then you're like, okay, well, how am I going to have all these as just one individual, well, you build a private equity and you can have these subsidiaries. That's always been something that I wanted to do. And and along the way with finance as well, you know, getting to finance, bringing lending to businesses because I love looking at P&L and balance sheets mm-hmm. and being able to help businesses grow because then I can say to myself, I have equity in this business, I help them grow. Wow. It's like building, you know, mm-hmm. you want to help, like inf- going back to the influencing, Yeah. you want to influence the company and then they praise you for it. To me, it's, it's not about money. It's more about building. It's mm-hmm. about influencing. And when you when you leave this earth, <laughs> they they remember your name for something that you've done. You know, yeah. more than just you know for yourself. You did it for other people, and you helped build something. Is there a strategic thing that you do to keep that vision alive? You know, I talk about vision vision board. I talk about vi- visualization, plan of action, ex- execution. Um, is there something that you do to be able to keep that vision alive for your overall picture um, that keeps you motivated? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I I have a saying to myself that I do every morning. You know, I tell myself a certain thing that, you know, now you are the voice. You, you will lead, not follow. You will believe, not doubt. Mm-hmm. You will create, not destroy. You are a leader. Wait, say that again. Say that again so the viewers can hear you. <laughs> but that's, that's good. Mine. That's but good. That's, that's mine. But you people know, you need to hear it. the examples, so, though. Uh, so, you know, I, I wake up, I look at myself in the mirror. I actually used to um, have on, the, on my mirror where I would take uh, uh, this, um, uh, it's you type it in and it prints it out. It's a label maker, basically. Okay. And I will put the label, and I will put fear does not exist within me. Yes. And I will put I am a leader. Yes. I am not a follower. And so I wake up every morning and I look at that and I look at myself in the mirror and I just pound my chest and I... You pound I, your chest like yeah, this? Yeah, no, it's like a pound, like you do it really quick and then you, oh, you, you put okay. yourself in the right state just like this, This you're in the zone and you just tell yourself, you know, now I am the voice. I will lead, not follow. Yes. I will believe, not doubt. I will create, not destroy. I am a leader. I am an entrepreneur. Yes. You know, I would say, don't give up. Don't be lazy. Get it done. Get it done. Step up. Step up. And I'll just pound my chest again. I'll go. Yes. And then I love the, it. throughout the day, I keep telling myself that, yes. that to remind myself. Like every every t- now and then before. I even did it before we came in here. Okay. To, to myself. Yes. So yes. So it's, um, it's something that gets me going. You know, there's got to be something that you could say to yourself over that reminds yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And yes. And to pump yourself, to motivate yourself, to get in there and just do it yes. and you know when you were asking me how is that person gonna just jump and go do what they want to do that's another way to do it just tell yourself why you know do, why you're doing what you're doing and go forward with it right and repeat it to yourself every day every day it's like a it's like a rep, you know repetition like you know i i you know i visited tony robbins you know, he talks about repetition, repetition. You just back it over and over and over and over to yourself. Mm. You have to remind yourself. It's it's like it's like practicing when basketball players or NFL players or any sport teams. Why do they practice so they can continue to be at the level where they are or right. get get better? Yeah, it's the same thing as an entrepreneur, business owner. This is the way we practice. Mm. And if you're, that's what separates the 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 successful entrepreneurs from the entrepreneurs that are not that so successful is because what they do differently than the average right that gets them going and everybody has a different way 
it's like a mental thing. They have to stay centered absolutely, um, with their mind, their spirit, and their soul. I mean, their mind, their spirit, and their emotions, absolutely. all that. Absolutely. I'm a strong believer in that. If you get up every morning just averagely, you get up, you're grouchy, you're grumpy, you're going to have a grouchy, grumpy day. Mm-hmm. It's like the book, The Secret. Mm-hmm. You know? You read it? How you, yes. How I you attract the the when you, you haven't read it? I love the book, The okay, Secret, yes. So you know, when the way you wake up, and how you wake up is how you attract yeah. that day. Yeah. So the gravitational pull of the earth, yeah. that's what you're going to draw to yourself. Yes. So that's why every morning I have a routine that this is the time I wake up. I'm going to the gym. I get myself pumped up. Then I tell myself this. Then I do this. Then I do that. And I'm going to know that today's going to be a great day. Yes. And you're going to go. Th- it's not like that day is going to be a great day. You're going to go through obstacles. But, because but you're claiming that day. You're claiming that yes. day. Yes. And there are going to be obstacles that are going to come in there. You're just going to kick that obstacle and then just move about your day. That's all you're going to do. Isn't it funny when you can actually recognize someone who actually read The Secret? Because like the way their thought process is and their energy, <clears throat> it's like they have this frequency about themselves. Yeah, you, know? you, you will know... Who read the book The Secret? If the way <laughs> the way they say hi to you whenever they see you, really? if they're like, "Hey, how are you? How's it going? How's your day? You know, have you been great? Great. How's life? You know." The other person is like, "Hey, what's up? How are you? You right. know, yeah, uh, you know." Those are the people that are just like, you know, they had they don't do much reading. They just, <laughs> they just wake up regularly and. They just the secret changed my life, guys. I didn't know that um, there was a law of attraction and, you know, positive thinking and things like that. You know, when I was so searching, I was about uh, 21 years old. Okay. And I had to put out into the world that this is what I wanted to attract in my life. I wanted positivity. I wanted, you know, to be and to create my own, you know, reality. Yeah. And the book really helped me a lot. So get the book, The Secret, if you really want to transition and transform your mind and your life into, you know, a victorious um, mentality. Um, I highly recommend it. Yes. I highly recommend it to those that, um, like you were talking about, to take the leap of faith and to, that they don't want, if they're struggling, that where the position that they're in right now, and knowing how to take that leap to go to the next level, mm-hmm. read the book, The Secret, love yourself first. Yes. And <laughs> create this mentality where you're allowing the, the law of attraction to come towards you yeah. in a positive way, then you can... It's true. You're own. a magnet to um, whatever you put onto the world. Yes. So, And I love that you said love yourself first because that's what I truly believe. The world tells us that you know it's selfish to love yourself first. Oh my God, you're so selfish. No. But how can you give to others that you don't have yourself? How can you give to people love and understanding and peace and all of these things if you don't have that within yourself? So definitely, you know... Uh, find that within yourself, pour it into other people. I always say, you know, fall madly in love with yourself and then give that love into the world. That's really what I truly believe in. Absolutely. I I agree with you 100% with that because if you know how to love yourself, you can give that love back to someone else. Yeah. And I have learned that through, um, you know, loving myself first, which I gave that love to my mother, you know, passing it on to others that I, you know, I loved and currently and, you know, you just, then you know how to spread it. Yeah. But don't go overboard either. <laughs> right. You know, just make sure you balance it out to a point where it's, uh, you know, it's safe and it's step by step by step. Um, then uh, you can start influencing as well, you know, to others, you know, whether you're, you're a business owner or you're a manager of your corporation or yeah. whatever it is that you're doing, you can help the others to you know, grow. Do you think that there is an entrepreneur within every one of us and a leader within every one of us? Or do you think that there is a follower and then there's a leader? and Or do you think that there's different stages in our life where we have to follow and then become leaders? What do you think? I think that there's different stages. Um, everybody has a certain calling at a certain time period of their life. Um, it's more, if it's, it's not about the right time. It's more of if they choose to move forward at that time period. Maybe they're not ready for it. Maybe they they need to do more research. Um, so yeah, there there is there are the followers and there are the leaders. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you're someone less. If you're a follower, mm-hmm. you're just good at what you do at that level mm-hmm. where you are. And if you're happy, that's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Is to be happy and 
accepting where you are in life. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be an, a person that works at a bank and just there from nine to five, but you're happy with it. Mm -hmm. You're living your life. You're, yeah. you're, you know, you're happy with your life and, um, mm -hmm. and going to work at nine, leaving at five. As long as you're happy within yourself, that's the most important thing. That's the biggest gift that's that true. you can receive out of life is being happy with what you do. Again, I, like going back, I was successful, but I wasn't happy. Yeah. You know, I didn't have my why. Mm -hmm. You know, and if that person that's working from nine to five has their why mm -hmm. and they're happy, mm -hmm. their life is set. They probably know more than yeah. anybody else. Exactly. Do. They're probably more knowledge than the, yeah. than the person that is making... 500 million a year you know yeah. you never know because the person that's making 500 million a year that doesn't mean they're happy inside that's true that doesn't mean that they're happy because of that they probably don't have their why either yeah. you know you could be at the most peak point at your career but then you hit a plateau and then your life just goes like this and then some people just fall or some people just figure out what their why is what their calling is and they shoot up again i hit that plateau i went like a little down and then I pick myself back up. I said, no, this is where I need to go. Yeah. So I didn't allow myself to drop. Yeah. So, you know, again, fall eight times, get up nine. You just keep going. So, again, if they're happy with their life, then their life is full of gold and treasures. If you were to write a book about your life, what, it, what would it be called and what would it be about? Well, I am um, in the process of putting a book together. Um, I've been telling myself for the past year, and again, because due to last year, you know, revamping and a lot of things, um, I, the book will be about teaching young entrepreneurs about the struggles that you can go through and what, uh, what the possibilities are as you're coming up as a young entrepreneur. Okay. Um, the title, um, I don't know yet, but I was thinking The Endless Road to uh, Success okay. because it is endless. Yes. And, um, you know, you never know where it can take you. But endless meaning when you start, you know, at a very young age and it never ends. Because I look at it as I, w I was born to be an entrepreneur and a business owner. I wasn't mm. born to um, work for anyone because I didn't. It's not about the money again. It's about helping others to get to where they want to be and running you know, my companies to a point where it's theirs as well mm -hmm. and giving them shares of the business mm. and creating a lifestyle for themselves that maybe they, they don't have that courage to take that leap, but maybe I can give them that little leap mm -hmm. that they can have something for themselves yeah. if I help them. Mm -hmm. So that's my calling as well to do that. So I do have some people that want practical advice on you know what they need to write down or what they need to do to be able to make that jump but some people are ready to make that jump but it's like where do i go from there i don't really have a strategic plan like do you have like within your book to create entrepreneurs what would you tell them something that they can do practically because right now we're talking about okay make that jump make that leap you have that power inside of you, you have that greatness inside of you but some people believe that truly but they want practical things on really how to make that jump what would you tell them um practical things just create a routine for yourself that motivates you um to to jump and go forward you know what is it that drives you within you you know what do you where do you, what are you waking up for every morning so they got to go to the why yeah they have to go back to they have to start at their why mm -hmm. that's the what's your purpose thing. what's the purpose of <laughs> yes. doing what you're doing what's the purpose of your life yeah um why are you doing what you're doing like why are you working at the bank from nine to five right and yeah if you find that why and it makes sense to you and you love it then work at that bank for the rest of your life right but if you start for one minute have that doubt and cannot figure out why that's not your calling okay you're just doing it to just have a paycheck okay like you said so start with the why find your purpose and then everything else starts becoming a more clear picture there is no set routine of how to create but the biggest part is the why okay and then everything else falls into place then your mind starts opening up more to, wow, you know, this is why, and I want to do this, and I want to create this, and I want to make sure I have this, and I want to make sure I do this to help this person to have this. You know, then it just starts coming to you, and then you just day by day have a schedule of what you're doing to get to that why. Okay. To get to that reason why you're doing what you're doing. So they found the why, 
They know why they want to do this. They have their purpose. And then what? And then what you do is you start implementing your strategies, your um, your goals through routine, through regimens every day. Mm -hmm. You create regimens for yourself to keep going towards your goals because you cannot just, you know, go towards your goals by just, again, waking up averagely or you have to be ahead. You have to wake up earlier than the competitor. You have to be able to tell yourself that I'll start my day very early. I believe in starting my day early. Some people believe in starting their day at noon. I believe that the, the, time, the peak times throughout the day to get a lot of things done is between 6 a.m. to um, 1 p.m. Mm -mm. So I believe that if I wake up at 5 a.m., then I can get my day going, go to the gym, get, you know, come look at my task list for the day, do my prayer, do my meditation, and take a shower, get going. So mm -hmm. it's like a routine every day. And I never get bored of it mm -hmm. because I know that that's taking me higher every day because at the end of the night, I look at see my results. Then you look at your results, you're like, wow, I got this done, I got this done, I got this done, I got this done. So it wasn't boring of how I woke up mm -hmm. because it helped me to get to my um, goal, which I, you know, I, I finished off by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it, then you start, you start, you know, uh, praising it more. You start saying, you know, thank you, God. You know, I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And you start getting it going. That's the second step. When you find your why, then you create a process and a regimen for yourself mm -hmm. of how you're going to get to your goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's and what's the, the next step after that? The next <laughs> step is just keep going every day, creating the same thing. And you're going to run into obstacles. You're going to run into success. Appreciate the success. Uh, praise the success appreciate the obstacles in the in the down periods take it as a learning mm -hmm. so that's what i do every day and i learn from my my mistakes and i try very hard to not repeat the mistakes over and over again whether again if it's in my personal business or uh, relationship life and you just keep moving forward mm -hmm. you don't you don't think too much about things mm -hmm. you just go mm -hmm. and that's my biggest thing is just go with your gut every day Mm. that's good because you're very in tune with your yourself and your intuition um and in which it guides you yeah but you seem to be able to have that um that plan of action to you know spend some time meditating to spend some time praying yes. to spend some time doing you know um exercise and things like that so that's something that you want to tell the audience that you have to do that right absolutely i first it starts off with the right state of mind you have to put yourself in the right state of mind if you can put yourself in that right state by you know and then to get yourself to that right state is what what you can do to help yourself is you know meditating praying and all that stuff mm -hmm. Um, and then everything else comes with it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not in that right state of mind, you'll see that you're going to run through struggles because you have to put yourself in a position where your mind is going to the same direction as what you're feeling. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you cannot be distracted. You have to put yourself in the right state every day. And that's what I do. I put myself in that state. And again, it's through, it's through process. It's through meditation. It's through, you know, telling yourself something back and forth, back and forth every day. Mm -hmm. And it helps me out. It's that right state of mind. That's what I do. Um, it's crazy because, like, I like, you know, spiritual solitude a lot. And I like to be able to spend time alone, um, hear my intuition, hear my guide, my inner guide and things mm -hmm. like that a lot to the point where it's kind of like, why do I need, you know, the next person? <laughs> because I don't even want a conversation that's surface. I don't want a conversation that is going to distract me from my center, right? Sure. So, but I do need people who are, I'm going to surround myself with that are like-minded, that are, are going to pull me higher, that are going to feed my mind, my body, my soul um, in the right direction, in an alignment of where I want to go. Um, some things that I do is, you know, reading or YouTube or, you know, seminars and things like that. But um, my question to you is, what do you do to stay motivated into that alignment of your success? Um, education and, again, going to, like you said, seminars, going to different like communication classes, um, 
you know, uh, Tony Robbins <laughs> University. Yes. And it really helps to. Break How was it. that? Because uh, I want to take that. Listen, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's a major major breakthrough. Let me tell you that. <laughs> really, a, is it, it worth it? Because I know it's, I heard it's, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's ten thousand. It's, it's definitely <laughs> worth it. It's, a, it's like a breakthrough through of life. Wow. And, and you know, one of the univer one of the courses of the university, Unleash the Power Within, is that Oprah went to, mm. and Oprah praises. T uh, Tony Robbins for it. You know, whatever Oprah says, that means we have to do it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but y through through Tony Robbins' university, what it taught me was, again, putting myself in that right state. After, I, I went to Tony Robbins' university in 2011. My company grew by 22% every year after that. Why? Because of my state of mind that I put myself in. And the, the, the strategies that he, that he um, taught, I implemented into my daily life. So let's say we didn't want to spend ten thousand dollars to get there. <laughs> Can you give us some strategies, a little bit, to be yeah, able yeah, to? Yeah, I, mean, I again, I, I'll try my. I'm not Tony Robbins, but I, I'll try my best to give you the strategies of what he's taught. I mean, again, he teaches like what I was talking about the the the, the routines every day. It's RPM, you know, just repetitive, re repetitive, over and over and over and over and over again. Then it starts becoming like like it's like normal. You're not you're not feeling like you're even doing it. It's just become normal, and you're you're growing. And then before you know, it, you're looking back and saying, "Oh my God, I've come such a long way because of what I've been doing." And then he talks about putting yourself in the right state of mind. Mm. That right state, that's where it starts, and then mm -hmm. creating your why of mm -hmm. what you're doing, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So RPM, RPM, live by that every day. Mm -hmm. And so you spent ten thousand dollars for that. <laughs> well, ten thousand was one course. <laughs> the rest were like five to six thousand dollars. If it helps your company, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, it's. You know, let me. It, that's the best ten thousand I ever spent in my life. Okay, so let's say that you have people that are watching you that you know want to know your message in the world. What would you like to share to the world that is most important to you? You live and learn your passing on moment. The most important lesson that you can learn is having having gratitude every day for every day. Um, I, I thank God for every day that I wake up that I'm healthy and I'm able to be able to breathe correctly, walk correctly, see correctly, touch correctly. Mm -hmm. Because without that, there's nothing possible. And... Um, my message is to just have gratitude every day. You know, don't take life for granted because you never know tomorrow your health is bad and um, something can happen to you where you can't even go towards your dreams or your goals. I look at, I look at life every day now as a blessing, you know, every minute and every second because I've had family that's gone through illness and I have experience of what it can feel like to lose someone that you love and um mm. and it's it's it, it puts a toll on your life but if you can have gratitude for life every day and thank god every day there's it's it's um there's no telling what you're capable of doing so that's my message it's not nothing to do with business it's I just gratitude for life every day i love that it it, it puts things to perspective and what really matters um, and then the other question I want to ask you is, what is it that you're working on now? Um, I know you have your private equity firm and you are launching a new career or a new uh, business. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, um, it's called Credit Freedom. And Credit Freedom, what we do is we'll repair and restore credit if you have bad credit, um, whether if it's personal or business. We establish credit for businesses. And um, let's say you're trying to buy a home or a car or s finance something mm -hmm. and you don't have good credit, we can guarantee 90-day results of removal of inquiries or collections or delinquencies. Where do I sign up? <laughs> you have bad credit? You want, you want your credit well, side? I mean, I'm just saying, no, I, have, I love it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's something that, again, goes back to helping and influencing people. Yes. It's a company that can help people. I want to be able to for people to write good reviews to say that Credit Freedom helped me and my family to get this home. Right. You know, it's very important to me. And 
a good friend of mine has a company similar and I learned uh, a few ropes from him and, um, and which put me in a position to create a company myself because I saw the many people that he would help and I said, wow, this is great. You know, I, I love that people call and just praise and say thank you for helping me and my family get this home that we didn't believe two months ago that we can get because we had a 500 credit score, but you know, <laughs> jumped it up to like 700 wow. within like 45 days. So. That, that that to me is it's just, it is amazing and that to me is magic <laughs> and at the same time it's it's gratitude you know so yes. and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing and of course it helps with financial you know stability towards my private equity and I'm 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 responsible for <laughs> my company's bank account to make sure that we get to a certain level yes but at the same time it's more of influencing and helping people as well so what, what more can I say, guys? This person has a vision, a mission, and a purpose in this life, and I'm so grateful that you are here to share that. I'm grateful to be able to give you the platform to make an impact in the world, and I'm sure you did today by our viewers that are watching. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was a great honor. And there you guys have it. Thank you for tuning in to Empower Hour with the Corn Street. <laughs> 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 All, right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>